In this module, we're going to talk about Consent Center and what records you need to create to ensure that the email messages that you send out to your leads land in their email boxes and also abide by their personal data preferences. Let's talk about Consent Center. Consent Center is an area where like Customer Insights Journeys user can manage personal preferences for different types of marketing message types. For this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create an email consent because I believe that's the most common consent type and it's the one that we will come across when we create a real-time journey in a later. Underneath Consent Center, as you'll see later on, for an email message to get delivered to a lead, that lead must have already consented to receive that type of email. And so a higher level above that, they also need to say, hey, I want to receive sales and marketing messaging from you. Or, hey, I'm okay to receive administrative type emails. So the system needs to maintain those as specific records so that when it's time to send an email and that email is a sales and marketing email, we have prior consent for those leads. If we don't, then those email messages within our real-time journeys are likely to get blocked. And I'll show you where you can see the blocks later on. Now I'm going to create a manual email consent record. It is totally possible and recommended to do this as an Excel import. This contact point consents is a table just like any other table within the system. So you're welcome to import those in bulk. So if I click email consent, this window is going to pop up and I'll put mine in there just for an example. Compliance profile, I'm going to choose the default compliance profile for now. I'm going to do a separate video on compliance profiles and I'm going to select a purpose. Commercial, this is the same as sales and marketing type emails. So make sure to choose commercial, if that's the case. And this value is key. Opted in is, think of it, it's similar to subscribing to a marketing list, to a, to a sub subscription list, right? Opted out, this is the same as saying, I don't want to, I do not want to receive sales and marketing material. going to leave this as opted in. Now, if you want to leave a reason, you can. I'm going to leave it at no reason, and I am not going to put who requested the change. But I suppose if you were doing this on behalf of somebody else, that might be a good information point to keep. So once I save that, now within this active contact point consents view, you can see there's my email, the channel, this channel is automatically con uh, configured because it's implied based on the email consent type. The consent type is purpose. That's commercial. You can choose topics. We'll talk about that later. Consent says opted in, source, internal, and then standard when that was modified. Now I'm going to create one more. But this time I'm going to opt out. I'm going to, excuse me, opt in. I'm going to choose transactional. And what transactional is going to allow is any type of administrative type email, purely informational, not selling me anything. There are different compliance regulations and rules around this. If your email truly is transactional, please choose that. Opt it in, leave everything else the same, and click save. Just like my first example, we now have another row describing my consent for administrative type emails. And then I also have my original row here describing consent for sales and marketing.
this will be important. Well, in a real time to me, if I have an action step to send an email, then, and I am the lead, for example, in this situation, the platform is gonna look at this active, this contact point consent table, see if I have consented for the specific type of email that the journey is going to send. And if I have, then that should go through and end up in my mailbox. Another type of consent is, is phone consent. Now it's gonna act the same way as email consent. One is gonna ask for a phone number, a compliance profile, all the same values. I'm not gonna do this right now. Now, if you clicked on load consent, you could take contacts or leads that are already in some other area of the platform, but don't have any contact point consents already created. Or let's just say you were using outbound marketing, which is the, the module that came before real time, and you needed to make sure there was contact point consent records for those. This would be a good way to go about migrating those. As you can see, if you clicked on this link, it would give you some more detailed instructions on how to do that. All right, so I'm gonna not do that at this time. One thing I wanna mention is this contact point consent has a lookup value to commercial, and a commercial also has associated compliance profiles. And I'm gonna talk about that in another area of this video. But this is allowed purposes and compliance profiles to be grouped together so that it's more easy to manage and um, link a single record to your email instead of having to link all of the records to that email, making it hard to maintain. So as you'll see, when it's time to create a journey, you'll be asked to choose a compliance profile and that will make sure that all of the purposes and all the topics that are associated with that profile are abided by and respected for compliance purposes. Now, if you wanted to get really granular, you can also add topics to a purpose. And so this adds a, a second layer of detail. So let's say you had a commercial type email, but within that commercial type email, let's just say you had a topic of events. So that's even more specific. So someone would say, uh, I want, want to receive events. I want to receive webinars. I want to receive some other category of sales and marketing material. And that's a really good way to set this, this up. So then the system will not only check for the purpose type, but it will also check for the topics associated with that, further giving you that granularity if you want to. Perfectly fine not to go along with this, but if you wanted to get advanced, you can totally. Here, this email enforcement model, highly recommend that this is set to restrictive. And what this is going to mean is that any email that you set as commercial that the system is actually going to require that this opt-in is this contact point consent exists before that email lands if you said non-restrictive then that would be essentially the same as not having a purpose at all which kind of defeats the purpose of the platform and the system so to remain compliant and to be on the safe side, set this to be restricted. That does it for our part of this module. And I hope you enjoy it. It's time to talk about compliance profiles and how once you've created a profile, you can recycle that and ensure that all of your emails abide by the same compliance profile rules. Now, in order to get to this specific area, go to settings in the navigation 
And then underneath customer engagement, there's a compliance profiles navigation link. You click on that. Now it's going to take you to all of the compliance profiles that you have set up. Now, if I were to click on default, this is the one the system creates for you automatically. I'll give you a little tour of this one. So there's a name, there's a consent link type. Going forward, preference center is the only option that you have. Technically in prior installations, uh, there were other consent link types. The, the best one going forward and it allows for uh, enhanced features such as SMS. So we're not gonna go into detail about that, but just know this is the default. The company, uh, the default preference center that's tied to this. So that's going to take you to the essentially web page that allows people to um, opt in and opt out uh, specific items. Other tab, if I click on this, it's gonna show me the associated consent purposes that go with this compliance pro. So commercial and transactional, these are out of the box. Consent purposes, you can create your own consent purposes and associate them back to this compliance profile. However, be careful with that because there's no enforcement on what you name it. So you could name it commercial, and then all of a sudden you have multiple different types of commercial rows. And it's really confusing to know which one goes with which compliance profile and which one was the default one, which is the one I created. It gets very confusing. So Leave the ones that are, but feel free to associate them to a new compliance profile. What this setup allows us is at the point when it's time to send an email, one can choose a compliance profile that governs that email send. And that compliance profile has consent purposes that are associated with it. And this allows for that email to know, does this person have any contact point consent records for commercial or for transactional types? That does it for compliance profiles. Very simple, straightforward platform. Its main strength is to allow you to aggregate communication purposes underneath and your associated tracking.